Uh, welcome, everybody. I'm Scott Patton. Your host joining us, as usual, is Martin Patella, health coach at Life Enthusiast. And uh, we have just want to talk about some questions and posts that people had put in the group and share our thoughts on those with you. So make sure you like leave comments and uh, let us know what you think. I'm sure that uh, uh, you know some people will agree, some people will disagree. Be polite. There's uh, lots of different people in the world and we all react differently to different things. So with that, uh, Sandy had a post that we thought was interesting, we wanted to share with you, which was going to a new doctor on Tuesday. Wish me better luck than I've had with the doctors here so far. I got to some place in February and I still haven't found a doctor who's willing to continue the treatment that it took me about 20, I guess, years to find works best for me. That includes meds I've been in on for years and I have yet to even get a referral to rheumatology. So yes, doctors, we hear this all the time when it comes to doctors. The number one thing we hear is it's in your head. So. I think we need to say it as much as we can, which is, yes, it's in your head, but not the way they think. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's not your imagination. You're not crazy. Uh, this is a real thing that happens. And one of the problems that doctors have is they depend on your blood to diagnose you. So they take a sample of blood. They send it to a lab. The lab says nothing wrong. And if the lab says there's nothing wrong, there's nothing wrong. And unfortunately, the lab is wrong. There's something wrong. And yeah. Well, more to this topic is this. The modern medicine or the mainstream Western Rockefeller Carnegie controlled medicine is a whole bunch of silos. They do not treat the whole person. They treat the body parts. So when you speak to a rheumatologist, they are interested in your joints. If you speak to a psychologist, they talk about your mental health. That's it. If you talk to a dentist, you only discuss your teeth and so on. These body parts, you know, a cardiologist will only discuss cardiovascular. That's it. However, all of these chronic inflammatory degenerative histamine mediated diseases are systemic. So everything's connected to everything else. For example, if you happen to be uh, allergic to gluten, to wheat, or at least intolerant of it, you can have high blood pressure, you could have joint pains, and you can have migraines, and you can have, mm, I don't know, some other soft tissue pains. So the heart palpitations, that's a cardiovascular problem. The joint pain, that's a rheumatologist problem. And the, uh, oh, the skin problems that come with it, that's a dermatologist. And you get three different prescriptions. They don't connect with one another. And not one of them asked, what is the cause of this? So you have to switch from the Western model of chasing symptoms to the model of um, root cause resolution. Homeopathy works that way. Osteopathy works that way. Uh, traditional Chinese medicine, Ayurvedic medicine, those all would treat the patient as a whole, taking in account the biological individuality. When you switch to that model, you have a chance. But the illness that we call fibromyalgia is a systemic problem, not an organ problem. So let me put that a slightly different way. You have a house, you have a yard. On the yard, in the yard, is lots of grass. Unfortunately, dandelions are popping up all over the place. So what do you do? You get out the lawnmower and you mow the lawn because, hey, it just chops up all those dandelions and they're gone. Problem is, is two days later, the dandelions are back and they're popped up just as high as they were before because you were dealing with the, 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 the uh, symptoms. I, was, I, I got stuck on sim, sim, symptoms. Uh, I got stuck <laughs> on S. <laughs> 
but you're just dealing with the symptom. The symptom is there's a yellow flower that's popped up over the grass, right? So you just go there and you grab it and you pull it out, gone. Except the next day or two days later, it's back. So you need to go down and you need to dig out that dandelion root and pull the root out. And all of a sudden your grass is going to grow. It's not going to have anything competing with it for water or sunlight or any of that sort of stuff. Yeah. And it's going to thrive. And our bodies are like that. We have these dandelions that are popping up and, oh, it's a sore elbow. Oh, it's a sore foot. It's a swollen foot. Oh, it's my ear is kind of sore. I have a headache. I have migraines. I have that back. Oh, I have no energy. All these things, people go, well, you know, you must have fibromyalgia. Well, you have a problem. It's, you know, it's popping out in all these different ways or one or two of these different ways. And that's why everyone's confused. Because everyone in the group, if you compare what, you know, what's your problem? Well, it's my foot. Well, it's not my foot. My foot's fine. I got a problem with my elbow. Well, it's a joint. Yeah. Just a different place where the dandelion yeah. is popping up. This reminds me of the most common opening in a question on the fibromyalgia group, which is, does anyone here have, and then follows a, a problem with their ankle? or a swollen elbow, or a, uh, I don't know, some rash on a different body part. Right. Or does anyone gain weight on amitriptyline? Or does anyone get weight gain on gabapentin? Or does anyone tolerate um, Lyrica? All of these toxic chemical things that you're throwing into your body are simply adding to the heap of toxins that your body is trying to deal with and it's suppressing something. Let me give you a really interesting metaphor for, for this, which is like this. The restaurant, the restaurant owner called me and said, I have a rat problem. It's horrendous. They're all over. They're just infesting everything. I called my doctor and doctor said, well, rats, that's easy. We just put some poisoned food out there. The rats will eat it. Well, sure enough, the rats ate it. And then the eagle ate the rat and died. Then the owl ate the poisoned rat and died. Also, some neighborhood dogs and cats ate that poisoned food and died. So we had some side effects. So he finally called me and I said, Oh, well, let's take a look around your restaurant. What about this garbage can that you have sitting at the back of the restaurant? You are loading it with all the leftovers. That's what's feeding the rats. Why don't we just lock it up? Why don't we just take away the food source for the rats and see what happens? Well, the rats have a choice. They either starve or move away. Right. The rat problem is gone. Okay, so how do we relate this to the rheumatologist and psychologist and the 20 year beautifully fine tuned uh, um, mixed cocktail of pills? Well, the pills were holding the problem contained just so it wouldn't blow up. But on that way, you were toxifying your liver and your kidneys and it's, it's a slope that goes downhill. All of these pharmaceutical con concoctions are toxins or toxic. They will damage your organs. No doubt about that. They're always at a price. Did you know that, for example, prednisone, which is a corticosteroid that's given frequently to people who are inflamed, is supposed to be not taken longer than six weeks. That's it. Wow. I, I know of people who have been on it for years, suppressing their immune system from doing what it wants to do rather than finding the root cause and taking that cause away. Hmm. Anyway. So, Martin, can part of this problem be traced back to wanting to live a comfortable life? Like, it just strikes me as... You know, oh, Scott. <laughs> one of my friends has this great thing. It's like 
do the hard thing and life is easy. Do the easy thing and life is hard. Yeah. So it's kind of like if we have to put up with this pain and this ache. Yeah, yeah. And or even even a better way would be would be I love coffee. And now you're telling me I can't drink coffee because it causes all the pain in my body. Or I like Coca-Cola. I drink three bottles a day. And now you're telling me I can't have to drink water. Like it's like there's a change that has to be made in the life because the life is obviously not right. There's something wrong. We don't know what it is. We find out what it is and then we have to change it. And if you do like Mm. a food journal and you notice after Coke, you're in pain, then stop drinking the Coke. Like you always say, when you're in a hole, the first thing you do is stop digging. Yeah. And uh, well, you need to you understand have... what the hole is or what you've done. Yeah. <laughs> stuck. Something stuck in my head. You reminded me of a Finnish proverb that says, the lazy man has all the blisters. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. And it's it's true. Like, for example, if you try to learn to play guitar, you are going to first have to toughen the, the these surfaces on your fingers for the first while you're going to hurt. Yep. Anyway, so there's a really awesome guy. His name is Joe Rogan. He has a very famous podcast. By the way, I recommend it to everyone. He's awesome. Anyway, Joe Rogan starts his day by doing the most awful thing he can do, which is he gets into an ice bath. Oh. 33 degree water for three minutes. He says it feels awful, just horrible. But he knows that everything after that is going to be awesome <laughs> in comparison. Right. So then, then he goes and he starts his exercise and he says it takes him something like 45 minutes before he starts sweating when moving seriously, like he, he uh, does heavy lifting and all of that. His exercise routine is two hours long. And uh, when he described it, I felt like a weakling relative to that. But anyway, the point of that is that when you toughen your body, you will actually develop resilience. Right. We humans are supposed to work under load. We're supposed to walk and carry water or carry something we killed or just what's the word is it not not stress work under load would be the yeah. way i would put it yeah we'd be taking our we'd be traveling from place to place and we'd be taking all of our stuff with us walking on the savanna of africa yeah sometimes with an animal over our back sometimes with wood yeah. or water like you said yeah so the, the western the western society the industrialized society let's call it that is creating a lot of comforts but is turning us into sick people in the process both by producing and introducing a lot of toxicity into the environment but also by making us less tough like i make myself exercise every day i don't love it but i make myself do it because if I don't, I will lose the ability to do it. Yeah. And the older you get, the faster you lose it, by the way. Oh, shoot. Now you tell me. Uh, yeah. It's a, it's a real shocker how fast you can you can lose that muscle tone. But that's the thing, right? It's like it's it's I think with fibromyalgia, there's a mental aspect. There's an emotional aspect. There's a physical aspect. I just stop at those three. And the emotional and mental part is I'm eating or drinking something that I shouldn't be. Maybe I'm smoking. Maybe it's coffee. I mean, do a food journal and and it will probably become fairly clear what those things might be, right? Or there's trauma, emotional trauma that I haven't dealt with. And nobody wants, it's very uncomfortable going to a psychiatrist or a psychologist or a therapist and dealing with all that sort of stuff, Mm -hmm. even though, you know, it's... It's causing all this pain. Let me say something that's quite quite important, which is this. The food that your grandparents ate 60 years ago would be okay for you. But that same food, let's call it a loaf of bread or a plate of soup or whatever, 
today is actually not good for you. The, and it's not the same. It's not the same. Yeah. The, the main point is that we have been using uh, mass production agricultural methods to produce stuff. It has depleted the soils. They have become demineralized. They are uh, using herbicides and pesticides on the plants that even in trace amounts get into the final product, which is enough to make us potentiate it, make us just susceptible to all kinds of other things. Right. And, and then now, now the computer era, the blue light, yeah. the electromagnetic, electromagnetic frequencies, all that other Microwaves. stuff. Waves at us, right? Yeah. So just to give you guys an example, when Martin goes down to the grocery store and he buys a loaf of bread and he gets home, he's all excited about eating this bread. He eats a sandwich. His whole forehead goes red. His cheeks go red. And he usually has two or three really ugly zits. So Martin decides to go to Italy and he walks around and he's smelling all this beautiful bread coming out of the little local bakeries and he can't handle it anymore. He goes in, he gets a big loaf of bread, gets to his a place, cuts it up, puts some butter on it, chomp, chomp, chomp. And he waits for the red to show up and it doesn't, doesn't show up. Goes back to the bakery, says, this is what normally happens to me. Why doesn't it happen with your bread? And the baker says, in Italy, it is against the law to grow wheat any way other than the way the Romans did 2,000 years ago. So there's no pesticides, there's no herbicides, there's no genetic modification, there's no, you know, the botanists can stick pieces of plants together and grow something new. None of that. It's the same wheat. So when Martin gets the old-fashioned wheat, he has no problem eating the bread. And that's, I think, a really good example of what you were saying about, well, when I was a kid, I ate, you know, Rice Krispies, no problem, yeah. Uh, or uh, I poured ketchup all over everything, no problem, yeah. Like, I'm in Africa. That ketchup, by the way, back when, did not include uh, genetically modified food, did not include high fructose corn syrup, did not include... <laughs> The, it goes um, on and on. What's that thing called? Glyphosate loaded uh, wheat product, all that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I, so I'm in Africa and I bought a bottle of ketchup because nobody has ketchup. And there's like four items in the bottle like tomato, tomato paste, sugar, you know. And then I look at the label in Canada where I'm from, it's like this long, like it's just got all these little chemicals in it, right? So what we eat when we're eating these ultra processed foods, as opposed to non processed foods, which would be like carrots and lettuce and cabbage and that sort of stuff, uh, meat, uh, it makes a big difference in, in it. So if you're sitting in front of Netflix and you're chowing down on Lay's and Doritos, while you're drinking your Coke and you're wondering why you're sick, that's part of the puzzle. All right, so back to the beginning. You need to think of the body as an integrated, uni unified system, and you cannot treat it as a bunch of silos separate from one another because you'll get four different prescriptions based on the specialties of the four people that you'll see without having an integrated, they, many, many uh, practitioners claim this. They will claim, oh, we're integrative. That's not the same thing as seeing you as integrated. Right. Anyway. And oftentimes those drugs will work against each other. Yeah, that. So my, my advice would be, that's real good that you have found a, prescription or a concoction that works for you but see if you can figure out how you can get rid of all of that right and i think martin we should always be ending these on a happy note there are people that have had real problems with fibromyalgia and are doing really well they're not in as much pain as they used to be they feel like they're getting better their moods are better um, they're able to work and you know, there's no reason why you can't be among those people. Yep. Great. Two of us Thanks for in that club. Yeah.
That's right. So thanks for joining us, everybody. Hopefully this was helpful. Leave some comments below and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.